In Washington today, the House rejected a balanced budget amendment to the Constitution that Republicans say is necessary to get the nation's fiscal house in order. Despite obtaining a majority, the measure needed a two-thirds majority to amend the Constitution. Meanwhile, another amendment to curb the influence of corporations is gaining legislative traction. Supporters say the measure is necessary in response to corporate personhood established in last year's Citizens United Supreme Court decision, which paved the way for unlimited corporate spending in elections. FSRN's Michael Lawson reports. Corporate personhood has been a question in the United States courts for nearly two centuries. Dartmouth College v. Woodward in 1819 recognized the rights of corporations to make and enforce contracts like natural persons. An 1886 case before the Supreme Court is used as the basis for recognizing corporations as people under the 14th Amendment. The now infamous Citizens United case of 2010 also ruled in favor of corporate constitutional rights, lifting limits on campaign financing for corporations and unions. The ruling has invigorated opponents of corporate personhood and the growing influence of a powerful few. Representative James McGovern of Massachusetts this week introduced an amendment to the Constitution that would repeal the effects of Citizens United. The People's Rights Amendment would explicitly state that the rights protected by the Constitution are intended for natural persons. McGovern says it's simple, that the Constitution starts with, we, the people. Corporations are not people. People are the ones who are supposed to govern this country and make the laws and set the rules. Not corporations, but people. And that's what I'm trying to, to, to force the discussion toward. While Citizens United became the spark to lead a challenge to corporate personhood, the decision deals mainly with election financing. A U.S. District Court recently blocked a regulation from the Food and Drug Administration that requires graphic warning labels on cigarette packaging. The court decided that the regulation violated the speech rights of companies under the First Amendment. McGovern cites this case and says this amendment goes beyond Citizens United to the creeping influence of corporate overreach. Sometimes, you know, the corporate mentality is not in the best interest, the health and well-being of of, of the people. So people need to be in charge of their future and of their government. And it is people that great corporations that give them rights not the other way around. McGovern is not alone in rejecting the court's ideas about corporations. Democratic Representative Ted Deutsch of Florida introduced his own amendment Friday, containing similar language to McGovern's, but also directly addressing campaign financing. A group of senators earlier this month introduced legislation with a more narrow focus on combating the effects of Citizens United. Advocacy organization Free Speech for People was born the same day the Citizens United decision was announced. The group is heading up a petition in support of the People's Rights Amendment. John Bonifaz is co-founder and director of the group. We saw the need to respond directly to this egregious ruling of the United States Supreme Court, a five-justice majority sweeping away a century of precedent that had barred corporate money in our elections. And really, this ruling is also the most extreme extension of a corporate rights doctrine that has eroded our First Amendment, our Constitution, for the past 30 years. Free Speech for People also lobbies in states and communities for resolutions that urge Congress to pass the amendment. Bonifaz says the only way to overturn the Citizens United decision is by constitutional amendment or another Supreme Court decision. We believe that what has to happen here is a national debate and conversation as to what kind of country do we want. Is it we the people or is it we the corporations? And constitutional amendment fights allow that kind of opportunity to happen. Resolutions have been introduced in five states and nine communities in 2011. An amendment requires two-thirds vote in both houses of Congress, as well as ratification by three-fourths of the states. Michael Lawson, FSRN, Washington.